How you doing? Eric here from Chaparral Motorsports with an install video on Progressive Suspension's Touring Link. So hopefully you saw my product overview on the Touring Link. If not, I'll give you a brief rundown. Basically, the Touring Link is a chassis stabilizer that will help reduce the currents of the dreaded bagger wobble that we've all experienced. Now, basically, what you have are three major components. You have a frame mount, a transmission mount, and a connecting rod. Now, once all three are installed, the frame mount will bolt up to the side of the frame here. The transmission mount gets bolted to the underside of the transmission pan, and then this connecting rod will tie the two together. And essentially what you're gonna do is create an anchor point on the side of the frame that will keep the rear of the drivetrain from turning, shaking, or twisting, which can then usually leads to the bagger wobble coming on. So by securing those two together, like I said, you've got an anchor point that'll keep the drivetrain from twisting. Now, Touring Link is available for early and late model baggers. Now, one thing I do want to point out, if you have a late model touring bike like this 2012 Street Glide that has the stock header system with the cross under exhaust, the Touring Link will not work with that because the cross under exhaust gets in the way of the brackets that you need to install. Also, same situation if you have an aftermarket head pipe with a cross under exhaust, the Touring Link won't work with that either. So you need to maybe rethink your exhaust system if you're gonna install a Touring Link. Now, since we have to take off the exhaust on this bike, I'm gonna go ahead and do so, and then when we come back, I'll show you exactly how to install the Touring Link. It's very easy. All right, so we're back. I've got the stock exhaust system off the bike. The next step is to unload the weight off the rear wheel. So we've got a jack underneath the frame. When you position the jack, you wanna make sure you don't set it so far back that you don't have room to work. So I've got a nice spot here. All I'm gonna do is unload the weight off the rear wheel. I'm not gonna raise the rear, rear wheel off the lift. We'll just go ahead and raise it up a little bit. Right about there is good. Okay. Now at this next step, this is where if you had any other exhaust system other than the stock system on a late model Harley, you would go ahead and loosen up the exhaust system. You may need to remove your muffler depending on where it sets um, in relation to the frame mounts and the transmission mount. But if uh, you can, you can loosen this stock muffler, maybe loosen it up at the uh, heads as well and give you yourself some room to work. So next step will be to remove these covers here on the side of the frame. They're just plastic covers. We're gonna reuse this middle one. So just pop it out with a screwdriver, like so. These two smaller ones will not be reused. To give ourselves a little more room to work, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the foot peg, the passenger foot peg as well. The frame mount bracket will be installed first. It's gonna go in these two holes where we remove those smaller caps. We're gonna use the supplied two 7 16 by one inch socket head cap fasteners. I'm gonna add a dab of medium strength thread locker as I will to all the bolts. And then mount the bracket to the frame. Once I have everything installed, I'll come back and torque these bolts to 55 to 65 foot-pounds. Moving on to the transmission pan, I'm going to remove the rear middle bolt, the right corner bolt, and the right side middle bolt. These will get set aside as they won't be reused. The transmission bracket gets mounted up next. As you can see, the fasteners that come in the kit include two longer quarter 20 bolts and a shorter quarter 20 bolt. The bracket is tapered on the right side, so that's where this shorter quarter 20 is going to be installed. Go ahead and put some thread locker on these before we get started.
Once all three bolts are installed, they'll get tightened down evenly and then torqued to spec according to the service manual. At this point, Progressive states you need to check your motorcycle's alignment. The connecting rod comes from Progressive preset, so it will match up to the two mounts perfectly if your motorcycle is properly aligned. If you notice that the holes aren't matching up, you need to address your alignment issue before you install the connecting rod to ensure proper handling and vibration control. Ours mounts up perfectly, so we're good to go. When it comes to installing the connecting rod, you wanna make sure that you have the lock nut facing the rear tire, so it mounts just like that. You're gonna apply some thread locker to the 3 8 by one inch socket cap bolts. You're gonna slip bolt through the bearing, then install a washer and get this loosely started. Once you have all the fasteners installed, you can go back and torque everything down. Once again, the transmission pan bolts get torqued to factory spec. These two get torqued to 24 foot pounds, and these two get torqued to 55 to 65 foot pounds. Once you have everything torqued down, you can reinstall or tighten your exhaust, whatever you needed to do, and you're ready to ride. So as you can see, other than dealing with the stock exhaust on this bike, installing the Touring Link was really easy. It took us a few minutes with some basic hand tools. Now with the Touring Link installed, it's gonna make for a much better ride and reduce the chance of you encountering that dreaded bagger wobble. Remember at Chaparral Motorsports, we have a ton of accessories for your Harley Davidson. You can see for yourself by visiting chapmoto.com or you come visit us at our store in San Bernardino. As always, thank you for watching and enjoy your ride.